How y'all doing? This is Obscure Terrain out here with adventure number four. Hell yeah, adventure four. We're in the Chiricahua Mountains and today we're joined by Javi and Kano. Guys, Hello. Javi, start us off. Introduce yourself. How's it going? My name is Javi. I was invited out by these two fine gentlemen. I'm a first grade teacher as well as a private investigator. Normally what I like to do for fun is this but not on such a large scale overall i'm not as prepared as i'd like to be but i have my basic essentials now i know i need to invest in camping gear but besides th this with these two hosts i am having a wonderful time i'm learning a lot and then over to our left Hello. Yourself and tell uh i'm kano i work at a coffee store i also uh do stage work with these dudes and go out and just do random shit most of the time. Random adventures out of town and stuff like that. Um, this guy is a badass. I'm a badass. It's my first time backpacking, so I'm interested to see uh, what goes down, yeah. how I survive it, how I make it. I don't know if I'm too sure if I'm too ready for it, but then again, you're never ready for a lot of stuff. It just kind of happens, so just see what we can get ourselves into and out of. And another hobby he forgot to mention was WWE. Oh yeah, I love that shit. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Wesley, Wesley loves it. He aspires to be a great WWE champion. Also talk but, about your leather work. Oh, I like to oh, make yeah. leather stuff too. He I do leather work as well. I like to do leather work as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Else. Hmm. Oh, uh, one questions? thing. Where are you guys from? El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas are technically Rapid City, South Dakota. You were born in Rapid City, South Dakota? Oh, snap. Okay. Do you consider yourself Texan, though? <laughs> Texas is the one and only Lone Star State. I got, I got, I got another question for you guys. Uh, what made you decide to do this? I just wanted to do it for the great company and just to get outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> I like camping. I like camping. I like being outdoors. It's going to be fun. I hear about you guys' adventures a lot. I watch your videos. They're fun. They look fun. And it's interesting just to test yourself, man, to see, like, what you can get in and out of and under extreme climates and, like, cold temperature and just random situations, see if you can get yourself out of it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like David Goggins says, that weather is the first thing to break a man. But it's exciting to just go into some harsh terrain and, like, build those mental calluses. That yeah. way you can take it back to your normal everyday life and, like, you have, like, that discipline and that capacity to just push through right because nothing here nothing in the real world is as hard as out here nah to, i find this the hardest thing yeah really mentally challenging physically challenging mentally and physically so you yeah, get back sure. you get back to the real civilization <laughs> the real world this is the real world <laughs> civilization is the proxy right yeah when you get back there though you appreciate it everything feels easy nothing pisses you off my you kids are gonna love me more. You ain't cut off. <laughs> oh yeah, you can show them all. Oh yeah. <laughs> so just to give you an overview of what we're about to do, we're in the Chiricahua Mountains. We got 9.3 miles. It's a loop trail. We're gonna climb an estimated 3,353 feet, and uh, the weather is gonna be between uh, low 30s and high 40s. 40s yeah. So it's gonna be pretty cold at night. And luckily, if we do get cloud coverage, that'll kind of insulate us. It won't I'm be as it cold. Rain. And that's it's so far. It says it's not going to rain. So it, there is a lot of there is some snow. Yeah, we, snow we've heard snow. that one before. Yeah. Though. <laughs> but, uh, We will be entering here into Morris Creek Canyon. A 2,000 foot plus climb in elevation must be hiked in order to reach our first camp, located here. The next morning we will scale the crest and camp one more night before dropping down into Mormon Creek Canyon and completing our loop. 
We plan for three days and two nights to finish our trip, but we must take every precaution since there will be no search and rescue due to the government shutdown. To further add to our difficulty, it has snowed more than usual up there, and temperatures are going to drop below freezing. This, this is, is Obscure, Obscure Terrain. terrain. Some people say that nothing ever lasts. Well, that is only half the truth. Memories, memories tend to last, even after we've forgotten our own and passed away. For centuries, our ancestors have passed theirs down through life lessons. In the Chiricahua Mountains, there are countless memories, mainly from the Chiricahua Apaches and Cochise, both spiritual and historical. January 7th, 2019, the day we depart for Arizona. Our camp host calls to inform us that the weather has taken a turn for the worse. Instead of canceling and sending us elsewhere, he took a chance in us. He believed in us and he plays a role in our story. A.J. Redhawk, our host, now our friend, now our brother, now family. We are Spirits of the Journey. the temperature how do you feel with your, your your gear right now warm a little too warm it's gonna be even warmer when I start moving so let's just see how do you feel I feel I feel like a mechanic who's ready to fix your car girl. yeah <laughs> let's see your uh, full body shot here this is actually my first time being recorded in the wilderness. I usually come out in the wilderness not being recorded. So. This is good old Brad Eyes hobby. <laughs> How you feeling, Kana? Too sweet. The trip started off driving up to the trail and it, we could see snow on the mountain, but there was no snow around like as we're driving up to it. So we were, our confidence was high, our morale was high. Everybody was all happy, feeling good. We keep going on this trail. And then we turn a corner and we get to the switchbacks. And the switchbacks are completely covered in snow. Yeah, but not, it's not too deep at this point. Like, but there's snow.
So it's 11.18 right now. We've hiked half a mile in and we're heavy in snow. I'm pretty warm though. All I have is just this shirt, undershirt and thermals, and that's it. We've got Kano and Wesley coming up right over here. There they are. All right, we're in a little over a mile and uh, we're about to do this, one of the bigger inclines. Uh, it's quite a bit of switchbacks and I think we're gonna go, well, I know we're gonna go 500 feet. We've elevation. been making elevation pretty quick though too, huh? Yeah, we have. I think that's the only reason why we're pretty winded as well. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. How do you feel? Good. I, I should have gotten prepared physically. I'm a little fat. But besides that, I'm having a great time. <laughs> Mr. Kano, how do you feel? I feel okay. Pack weight's killing me, but like you said, top mind over matter. So I could have worked out a little bit more, but I think if I keep my uh, breathing good, I'll be good. That's it. That's it, folks. We're not even a mile in yet. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I think the first three miles is the toughest part of this whole entire hike. It's all switchbacks. Yep, it's all going up. We all go up. <laughs> that was that was at the point where we were like we needed to get to a dry spot, and there was nowhere to camp when we we're going up the mountain because it was just switchbacks, snow, and then slopes, and that's it. Yeah, not, not very good camping. <laughs> not at all. And the it was pretty rough. On um, one of our guests on that first day, he was having a, a really hard time. Yeah. Um, Wade kind of stuck it out with him. Yeah. So. Uh, his name's Javi, uh, you'll see him, uh, and um, uh, he's just coughing up stuff from like, who knows where, from his lungs, and it was it was green, and uh, started to worry, but he wanted to push forward, so we just I just stuck with him, and we took our time. Yeah, we, my, my goal was to go ahead and see if we could get started on a campsite, and find a campsite, you know? Also, because I think it was because of the cold, another terrible thing happened to Javi. His bladder on his camelback broke. And his uh, bladder was sitting inside of his pack. Mm -hmm. so, so it wet all of his clothes. So yeah, all his extra clothes. We're out in like 10 degree weather and all his clothes, all his extra clothes are wet. So it, it was, it got pretty serious very quickly. Yeah. I mean, the and you know what? He, he was again, props. Yeah, he's a trooper because when we made it to the camp, we were on the crest, well we were on part of the crest, we weren't at the highest part of the crest, but uh, luckily it was dry and each of us had a job and we started doing our job. Uh, he was wet and he was sick and I didn't see him complain, he got right to work. Once we got that fire going, we made dinner. Javi made his tent and he disappeared in the tent. He was just trying to dry up and stay warm. So we helped wherever we could. Yeah, we, we dried we, his clothes out as much as we could, his boots out. So he had dry clothes in the morning. 
Yeah. And that was that, man. It was crazy. That first day, like, was a detox day for him because the next day and the day after, he was fine. What's up, Javi? What's happening? How you feeling? Fucking dope. I've been getting my ass whooped. From, like, how sick he was one day to how great he would look the next day. Yeah. It's, it it was, was kind of miraculous. <laughs> it was. Honestly, it was creepy. <laughs> What's up ladies and gents? It is the first morning of our trek. Uh, it starts sleeting on us early this morning and it keeps sleeting on us here and there. It's pretty windy up here on the crest. Um, we're expecting to hit more snow. Today is we're gonna get past Monta Vista Peak and then we're just gonna walk that crest as far as possible till we start descending on the other side. I just think the breathing is important, so as long as I keep my breathing, I'm fine. But it's been pretty good, pretty well. I've been pretty prepared so far. Yeah, some hype. Hell yeah, man. Can't wait for a camp two already. <laughs> these inclines suck. So far, I'm having a blast, except anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. My bag got soaked because of my camel bag. It bust, busted. My socks got wet. The snow seeped through. But you know, all his clothes got wet. <laughs> his boots got wet. His shirt caught fire. But look at this. This is what's important. See that smile? <laughs> So we came around the crest and uh, we're about to go up Monta Vista Peak and uh, this is where the snow was insanely deep. Like the day, the day before the snow was pretty deep but this part the snow was incredibly deep. Waist deep. deep. Yeah, there is a point. But I'm six foot one so it was waist deep. I've never hiked in snow this deep before or backpacked. I've hiked in snow. But man, this is tough. This is so tough. I give everybody props right now, Wes, Kano, Javi. Like, we're kicking ass. But we knew this was the hardest part. It's the last incline to Monta Vista Peak, and then we're gonna be at the, pretty much the crest of the mountain. So it'll be little ups and downs, not too bad. Did it hurt my knee? When you fell? No, just in general, I've had a bad knee. Mm -hmm. He just got uh, two knee injuries, like his knees, just stop bending. He was walking like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, no joke. And can you imagine going up a hill, like having it like not, but like you can't bend your knees, like it was crazy. So we started kind of slowing down, um, but it was okay because Connor just kept, he was tough, he kept going. We're here in the Chiricahua Mountains, way up. Look at our, look at our background. That's our background. And look at our background on this side our background on this side. We are 9,184 feet high and we've gained probably 3,300 somewhere in there. I'll give you, I'll give you facts. They'll be right here. Yeah. Did you see him? Come on. Talk about, because I was in front this time. So Wesley and Kano were behind yeah, and me I and Javi were up and way up in front. So we kept going and we're trying to find it. And I, from the topographical map, I saw four flat areas before we start the descent down and we needed to camp before we start the descent down. First one we come up to, nothing. It's just covered in snow, no tree coverage, nothing. So I was like, all right, let's keep going. Make it to the, make it to the second one 
And you know, when I make it to the second one, something's going on with my gut. I don't know what, but something is really wrenching. So we make it to the second one, even worse, like nowhere to camp, lot deep snow in that area. So we're like, man, so we had two more to go to. So we make it to the third one and uh, there's this little patch of trees and dry ground under it. And I didn't think anything of it because it was so overgrown and it was like real low. Like you couldn't fit anything under there. And uh, I, but I threw my pack off there cause it was uh, dry and I was just disappointed. I was like, man, we need to find a place. I'm so, I'm like, by this point, my intestines are really starting to hurt. And on top of that, it was starting to get dark. Yes. And Wesley comes up to me and he's like, well, he kind of asked me what's going on. What are, what are we going to do? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like, we're going to have to camp here somewhere. And he's all, that area is pretty badass, actually. I'm like, thank God. I'm glad you guys like that area because I had no other options. <laughs> yeah, there was no other options. So we got to work right away. We cleared all the, because it was like a, some baby pine trees, probably like 10 years old. They had a lot of dead on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so we cut off all the dead and we used that for firewood. You know, we sawed it off nice so those trees are going to get to spring up later on in the year yeah they got nice awesome. and pruned <laughs> but yeah so after we did the gave the trees a little bit of a pruning we were able to fit our tents in we were actually able to use some of the trees to build a shelter to, for to protect our fire Day three, it's snowing. You know, I've challenged myself, so nothing but thanks for obscure terrain. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you guys. Oh. Thank you guys for being great guests. And as always, the only way forward is through. I've had a little issue last night. Something didn't sit with me. So hopefully, uh, he made, let's just say he made a really solid trips. snow trail to a special tree in the forest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>